to our new monthly interview. Today we have Anna all the way in Balbriggan in Dublin. Yeah. Uh Falch Anna, thank you so much. Kunas at all to uh Tommy Goma, I can go mark or my good. I got to him. So, um, as you know, this is where we interview our members <clears throat> of Bite Size, and Anna is a GROW member. Now, I'm not going to introduce Anna. She's going to introduce herself first, as usual, Oscar then in English, and then we'll get the conversation flowing. So, Anna, Inish doing food fain. Tell us about yourself. Is uh, Anna? Is as an bush me? Rogoch agustogoch me anshin. Um Honik me go herin uh huig blina jagohin uh we coni orum igorkik the blinta faga so a honik me uh go balikia um Tommy Imohuni Lemov Hoshi Agus Markele Idushkirk Honti uh Balikia. Um Agus um uh Hosik me a following welge um Blian Ohin, more or less. <laughs> um, three Duolingo. Uh, three Duolingo, a uh, four may uh, bite size for Krila Sui Wat. Um, Agus Hosig me. Hosig me? Agus Hug me a bite size. Um, Blian Chokache. Good. Mahu. So you found us through the pod trailer to the podcast, which will also, well, what this is as well. Not only are we on YouTube, we're now a podcast uh, again. So So for those who didn't understand, um, can you tell us all that again? Ask Berla. There we go. Uh, so my name is Anna. I was born and bred in Russia. Uh, I came to Ireland uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, it's only approximately that stage, you know. Uh, so I've lived in Cork for many years before uh, moving to Dublin. I lived with my kids and my husband in North County Dublin, and I started learning Irish about a year ago through Duolingo. And then I found Bite Size Podcast, uh, which I actually found really helpful and really nice. And then a few months later, I joined uh, the Pubble, Bite Size Pubble, and uh, yeah, I've been I've been there since. Brilliant, brilliant. So you only started a year ago, Anna. Well, I have to say that your Gaelic is good. Your your pronunciation is brilliant. So you know, Duolingo started you off well, and uh, you gelled well into into bite size bubble, I think, as well. Um, yeah. So I suppose yeah, you said you started a year ago. Duolingo was your first. Um, I suppose well, the first time you 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 undertook it. But what was your first contact with it? Why, I suppose, maybe why you decided to learn it? And what was your first contact? I could gel those two questions in together, maybe. Mm. You know what? I've honestly, I've always, I mean, I always just loved being here in Ireland. Uh, and as you said, I've been here actually over 15 years at this stage. So it's been a long time and I fell in love with the country, with people and just everything really, you know, again, you know, it might not be as easy to love uh, Ireland or during the rainy days, in the rainy days, but still, you know, it's a it's a great country altogether. I have to say, and just so grateful to be here, really. Uh, and then, uh, as I lived in Cork in, uh, you know, kind of end of end of two thousands, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it here Irish much, but there were a few moments when it actually I stumbled upon it. Uh, I remember I was still only acquainting, you know, learning English at that stage. But I, I remember vividly once someone spoke Irish on the street and I was like, oh my goodness, this is not English. <laughs> <laughs> this must be Irish. It doesn't sound like any of the, you know, of the, I don't know, it's not a Spanish, it's not Italian, because you have plenty of those languages as well in Ireland, obviously, everywhere. Yeah. But then you're like, what is that one? And, um, and then also when I was working actually on my, on my thesis, um, in Cork, in one of the Cork, uh, Cork University archives. Uh, you probably know that place. So the Polodov, Polodov Street uh, one, the, you know, the some of the uh, librarians there, they definitely didn't chat uh, to each other in English. It was Irish, actually, you know. So it was an interesting kind of, you know, anyone could tell me even at that stage it was a dead language, like I wouldn't really believe them because, I mean, I could hear it. It wasn't mm -hmm. 
on, you know, but it was there somewhere. And obviously all the, you know, you, you know yourself how as a, as an immigrant, as an expat, you kind of moved to a new place and then you just, you know, you first just, I don't know, see all of those signs and you had culture all over Cork, you know, like it was just everywhere. So, you know, and Slanaval and whatnot, it's, it's, it's there, you know, mm-hmm. but you only kind of make sense of it later, I think. At least it was the way for me, because initially the, my, my journey, I suppose, was journey into English first, because you have, yeah. you have to make yourself comfortable speaking that language first. And then when you realize that you actually got to the point where you can't really, you don't feel like you can really improve, you're just there, you know, you have that basis, I suppose, the base, and then, then you kind of go, okay, let's just dig a bit deeper, so to speak, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah, I, I'm surprised. I, I love you talking about Cork. I lived in Cork myself. I studied there. So um, and it definitely is alive. You would hear it definitely. Of course, I was involved, you know, in the university, you know, in the Irish department, all of that. And you would obviously hear it much more often. But even outside, you did have the the opportunity to hear it. So yeah, I'm glad that you also experienced that. Um <clears throat> so why then, I suppose, why did you decide to actually what what pushed you then to start because you you said you've been in Ireland for 15 years but you only started Irish a year ago what was the the tipping point or the you know whatever you want to call it why tell me yeah so wait do you know what it's an interesting one I actually I'm a big believer you know I'm a parent myself so I'm a big believer no offense to anyone who wouldn't have who wouldn't ever have kids but the kids make you do things that you just wouldn't think of or they just take you to the next level kind of so uh i suppose it was always kind of at the back of my mind since i had my firstborn he's eight now actually so when we we moved to dublin as i said we lived in bray and i've actually had few gwilgori uh around us uh who were well uh they might not be actually from ireland themselves but they spoke irish to their kids and uh, and I was fortunate to uh, to know one lady, and she she spoke uh, Irish to her kids. And you know, I was at the at the stage, of course, I was uh, using Russian with uh, our son. So I kind of, you know, I, I thought it would be lovely just to have Irish later when, say, he he'll go to school, he starts school and everything. And then I'd say by the time he started school, he probably you know after first year in school, he probably had more Irish at that stage than I did. Uh, but I've joined, you know, it, it, it definitely, it's an interesting one as well. You know, it kind of, uh, the, all the lockdowns and, uh, mm-hmm. definitely made a big difference because really, I mean, I'm a language person. I love, I love, absolutely love learning languages. And, you know, whenever we would, you know, go for like a small holiday in Portugal or, I don't know, Spain, something, you know, I'd, France, I, you know, I'll, I'll have my Cooper focal because I just enjoy it. And I tend to naturally just pick up language within a few days, really. I mean, it's probably just, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I love to yeah, like- communicate uh, and it just really brings me joy, you know, and also being able to communicate in the native language as well. So, you know, after a week in Portugal, I'll be talking to the small kids. They'll be talking to me in Portuguese and I'll be replying back to them, you know, so uh, kind of, and then again, we had all the, we had all the lockdowns and it really just, I think it actually really helped for myself for sure to just get rooted in mm-hmm. here and, uh, God, I've walked my field outside of our apartment numerous times and it just really helped you to connect to the land. And then, you know, you, you realize like you won't actually be going another holiday and you won't be actually be able to now pick up in a language there is no point but you are here in this country the country that has its language and it's time to to dive into it why not really and I suppose it was good for me that you know in a way that I was just an outsider as well I can always just say oh you know I just want to learn the language I don't have to explain much well you know it's easier Mm -hmm. in a way for me being an outsider I suppose Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well yeah no really really nice and you're right I've heard a lot of people now and even myself you know really lockdowns I know it was a terrible time but it did give us a new outlook on life in general and anything not only you know some people took up cooking some people took up you know some sort of hobby knitting crocheting and are now experts in it um 
I've seen a lot of things come out of the lockdown because, again, you didn't have a second choice. And I like how you said, you know, you wouldn't have been going on another holiday. Why not learn the language of the place that you're in? Uh, I really, I really like it, Anna. Um, and you've come on, you, you're so, you know, well spoken in it, um, in Irish as well, and the amount that <clears throat> we heard at the start here, your pronunciation. But again, you're living in Ireland 15 years. You you already have the gloss. You already have the uh, the accent anyway in your English. So uh, it w- shouldn't have been too hard for you. Um, so I know you love learning languages. I'm the same, although I, I do think I'm a little bit slower. But maybe I'm lazier. I don't know, to be honest. Um, but what I suppose what's the, the most or the, what, what have you enjoyed the most about learning Irish? Which aspect of it would it be, you know, even even down to the language itself or maybe the fact that you could use it? What's your what's your favourite thing? Oh, that, that's actually a hard question, Emma. Sorry. It is, it is a hard <laughs> question because it's, I think it's everything really. Let me think about it. I think initially, kind of once you dive into it, you realise how beautiful it is. How poetic. Because before I probably kind of heard that it's poetic, you know, people marvelling at some of it really. But then you realise yourself, even just the pronunciation is uh, well. Again, it it will vary from uh, from country to country and you know from kind of kind of mm-hmm. to canons. But um, definitely the way you have the slender and the broad, you know, uh, vowels and consonants and everything, it just makes it so beautiful, really. Um, yeah, and I suppose the. The harder moments would be the kind of the structure, you know, the sentence structure, I suppose. But it, t- it takes a while to get it into your head for sure. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I don't think I, I'm fully there to be honest. But it's fine. I'm, I'm happy to learn. You know, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you love about Irish? It's no, it's just beautiful. It's it's beautiful. It, and it definitely you can, you know. Again, I'm I'm still in the very early stage, so I can see how it is a different way of. Uh, putting things together, just really kind of a different perspective, I suppose, where really. people would say it's a different outlook. And I can definitely see it. I'm mostly kind of still marveling at the way people speak and, you know, the radio and television sometimes, you know, uh, the way words are put together, really. I'm kind of, I'm still at the stage of trying to get it into my head, you know. Yeah. I'm enjoying it for sure. And yeah, I'll, maybe something, if something just comes up later, I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, really, no yeah, it's it's beautiful and very special. What I have to say, really, since I've started learning, you know, even after a year, like you're able to just read every signpost. It actually yeah. makes sense. You're you just you're not wondering anymore. Like, what is that now? What is that name of the town or whatever? You're like, this is it. It was there. <laughs> you know, like a fort by the river was there. You know, it's like. And you no, know, I think I'll be the biggest uh, language activist from that stage on the way to just, you know, I love to hear it. Because it, like, you can just, you're really falling in love with the country once again, but mm-hmm. on a much more deeper level. And you're really just becoming so much more rooted mm-hmm. in the country, into the land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know the place names. I'm a big fan myself, you know, um, I've done. You know my own little papers on them um in my own studies as well and i've just fallen in love with the idea of you know you've a new you've a new it's like looking at ireland through a new lens you know you've a pair of i don't know x-ray vision goggles you know and you can actually see what was there the names make sense things suddenly make sense and it's not as though the names of places for example are difficult to decipher you just have to have the knowledge you know you have your balia you have your doon you have your whatever and it just suddenly all comes together when you even have your cupola focal you don't need to be an expert in the language either um what about the kids then you know you've been learning for a year how are you getting on with them in school does it help you that um with the with the Obervale? do you help at all does it do you come in handy or do they know more than you and they don't need you at all? Are they helping you more so now? <laughs> Is it the other way around? You know what, to be honest with you, it's not really at the stage of doing much of upper value. So okay. uh, Christian now is in uh, is finishing first class. Okay. So uh, I would love him to actually be doing more Irish in his school. Well, look, if I'm little... honest, but I'll tell you now. So, um, I mean, he they kind of starting to read some stuff there, you know, but they're mostly doing it in the school, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's funny, I have um, I have another class, actually, uh, a local class that I'm doing, and I've got a, 
got one of those Bunga bars, uh, three, I think, Bunga bar three, mm-hmm. you know, school, school room for, for the third class. So yeah. I have it, I have it at home, I have it handy. We use it for the other, for the other class. And, um, you know, it's just, it's there. And Christian would often just come, you know, pick it up, you know, and read out something. He's like, mommy, I know this. And like, awesome. <laughs> So we kind of, we, if I learn something really cool or like, you know, I kind of share my, my stuff, you know, whatever I learn in Irish with him and I'll tell him, I ask him, do you know that word and do you know this? And some of that, you know, some of that, he's like, no, not a clue, mommy. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. Lovely. Uh, so all just all the words for like, you know, because they'll be like, what, playing, running, and, you know, we've discovered 25 words for to play in, in Irish, you know, the sugruch, the immerts. <laughs> But not, you know, it's it's interesting. It's a, yeah. it's a very interesting journey. It's kind of, it's really just, I think it's helping both of us, really. Mm-hmm. No, lovely that you have someone to bounce off as well, you know, and share your, your new words and learn from them as well. And I'm, I'm sure it'll get more and more as you go on. Wait until they get into secondary school and you have to work, learn for the curriculum. You'll be shouting at them, helping them for their, their oral exams as well. <laughs> I know. We're actually, we're actually meant to, our plan is to send our uh, youngest into New York. I love so, to hear it. So Best that, idea you'll have. That would be uh, interesting. But she's good with your with your Russian and your English is picking up. So okay. I feel we can add Irish to that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, good. Why not? Keep them keep them going young and it'll be a breeze for them when they're older and they'll have another 10 languages by the time they're 25. Definitely. You know Definitely. <laughs> Well, Anna, lovely. I really like that. I suppose, yeah, um, just reflecting back, I know you came to Bite Size and I know you take part quite a lot on Pubble. Um, do you have any words to say about Pubble or Bite Size or how have you been finding maybe the online platform or anything to do with us? I love it. I think it's brilliant. Honestly, I love it. I love that it really caters for different levels, you know, the whole program, I suppose, um, Bite Size and the Pubble, Pubble itself. To be honest, I would love to be able to participate more in kind of the, you know, the daily challenges. But it's just... No, it's hard. You have a life. You have kids. You have, you know... I, 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 hopefully, hopefully, hopefully in years to come. So I'd say I mostly, I mostly enjoy the the old sessions because, you know, it's once a week. It's there. You just kind of block that hour for, for, for that. And then you have your practice you know your oral practice your dialogue dialogue being read and you know you're able to chat and have a bit of banter and whatnot and and then you know like sometimes i would do a bit of you know so like i'll do a bit of the challenges so it's it's harder but still you know it's kind of just being able to kind of just to pick and choose i suppose really Mm -hmm. Uh, it's Mm -hmm. great and i love the way the actual you know actual bubble people that make it it's just so good to have that lovely circle of people who are devoted to the language and to the topic. Mm-hmm. And they bring so much with them, you know, they bring so much love, not only for Irish, but so, for so many other things, you know, for life in general. And I remember, I still remember like my first uh, bio session, my first few bio sessions, uh, the last ones, um, how supportive Chris was, you know, I mean, I was just, I was lost, you know, trying to read a dialogue out loud mm-hmm. first time uh, after doing Duolingo for a few good months, you know, that unfortunately won't really get you far, I believe. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. not yeah. Duolingo, but it's it's there just to start. And then you move to real stuff, I suppose. Yeah. And I was, I was absolutely lost because the pronunciation, uh, everything, there were just so many aspects and things. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then, you know, and then, and then, you know, you're being asked a question about even just something so simple, simple like how's the weather today, and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> and <laughs> you just you just can't even flutter a word because yeah, all you have is you know a few languages that you've mastered so far, but this one is just like what do I do? So Chris was so supportive. He was like he was just saying, oh, you'll get there. You just need time. Listen, listen, read. He recommended a few books. I can't even say that I have managed to find find those, but you know, just that moral support was so mm-hmm. big. And same, you know, that goes to Ben as well. Like he recommended a few, because I, you know, I wanted to kind of, I actually wanted to stick with the master uh, Irish, but again, 
it was so far from Dublin. And mm -hmm. uh, Ben was like, yeah, you just need to listen to, um, you know, Anse Ilyas. And here I was, you know, listening to Anse Ilyas at least a few times, uh, <laughs> a, few times uh, a week. It's so funny when I tell uh, some of, kind of, you know, locals here who speak Irish as well, I'm like, yeah, my favorite is Anse Ilyas. They're just <laughs> in love. I mean, I just give them such a great love. But, you know, you do what you need to do, really. Um, yeah. And again, a few months later, I mean, why this support was so important? Because really, you know, people says, I'll be fine. I am much better. You know, I'm out of the woods, I think, for some of the pronunciation, most of the pronunciation, probably. Uh, some of the language and grammar concepts really started to make sense. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say again, I'm, I'm not an expert in any way, but I'm, you know, it's kind of, you're kind of starting to be able to concentrate on other stuff not being so overwhelmed, I suppose, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when you, just, when you just start, it just bombards you from every direction, I know. I know. left, right and center, you know, yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, but I agree, like, yeah, going back to Pubble and the fact, you know, you say that you want to be more active, you know, in my daily challenges, of course, the daily challenges are there for whoever can and wants to do them, you know, I don't take it personally if members don't do them every day, I'm not crying, but um, they're definitely there and you have the choice and that's the nice thing, even with, you know, Ashter and the, the platform itself, this is what we're about, we're not about, you know, shouting at you because you didn't get it right or, you know, saying, oh, you should be able to do this, we're not, we're not in school here, we're all here for the same reason to learn the language and I'm here to support you same as Ben and as well then you're there as a member to be supported and to support others so and I, I love that as well when new people come in onto Pubble and introduce themselves you just see the bombardment of messages you know welcome and oh I, I and they pick out things to do you know you find your uncommon commonalities as Owen always likes to, to talk about you know you find things in common with the other members and you know you found out you might be living down the road from them or you might come from the same area Um, I've even found things with people um you know, connections with family. So overall, yeah, I really like it. I really like logging on there. I always say it on these interviews that it doesn't feel like work to me because I just feel like I'm chatting to people um, for a couple of hours every day and correcting them here and there. So yeah, and it's we're, we're lucky to have such a, an open and friendly um, pubble as well with everyone on there. And I think you fit right in, Anna. And again, with Chris supporting you, Chris, Chris is um, always always happy and always there to to answer other people's questions as well and that's what i love to see um even with other members as well so yeah a really good description i think anna you gave now so for anyone thinking of joining you know there's no there's no fear no no and like and again you know now we are getting new members well we're getting them every now and again but you mm -hmm. know there were few new members and you can just really see that emotion in them same as you just experienced you know a few months ago and you just guys please trust me it's going to be okay honestly it's going to be okay you just need to give it time like it just it takes time for those some of the concepts really to sink in mm -hmm. and i think it takes i would say it takes two three times more time kind of longer for it to sink than with some other i don't know roman languages you know it's, yeah at least for me at least for my uh slavic Slavic based brain, I'd say, you know, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's it, 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 like, it's, you know, with the practice, with the practice, and hopefully, you know, a daily practice, if it's possible, like, it, it's really going to click. There is just mm -hmm. no other way. It really will click. Just need to give it time. Yeah, perfect. Perfect um, Corla or uh, advice there from you, Anna. And, you know, you heard it from the horse's mouth now. You said you were in that spot a couple of months ago. And now look at you chatting to me, introducing yourself, Osgoelga, confident. We'll introduce, we'll, we'll, I'll interview you now in five years time and you'll be, you'll be fluent. We'll have this conversation fully, Osgoelga, hopefully. Fingers crossed. And the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Gurmeel of Meal and Meal and Mahagut, Asave Glauritlum, when may or ten of us on Cora. So thanks so much for chatting to me. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, for anyone watching or listening, leave a comment, let us know what you thought. And Anna, you can keep an eye on the comments as well in case anyone has the same connections or the same feelings as you. So Gurmeel <laughs> Mahagut, I'll see you on Pubble and I'll see everyone else next month. Slong Fold. Cool.